Amen. Thank you guys for coming to Reclaim San Antonio. Come on, let's just get excited for what the Lord is doing in this house. As we begin to worship, let's just stand to our feet and please feel free to come to the altar. So let us pray. So dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this time we have together, Lord. I pray for your blessing and your favor to be upon each and every person in this place. I pray for a new strength to enter us as we just praise and worship you, Lord. We thank you so much, Lord. We love you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Darkness, my God, 
stop working Even when I don't see that you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see that you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop, cause you are. Way make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. When I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop as you walk. Way make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Cause you are.
This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace, it's overwhelming. The more I seek you, the more I find.
Anxiety must go in Jesus' name. Doubt must go in Jesus' name. Confusion must go in Jesus' name. Anything not of you, Lord, be gone in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask today, you do what only you can do. Oh, Lord, you are free to move as you please. Have your way with your people. Do what only you can do. Be glorified and praised today in Jesus' name. Come on, one more time. Let's give him some praise today. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Reclaim Church San Antonio. Why don't you greet your neighbor? Say hello. It's good to see you today. Amen. God bless you.
What an awesome day to be in the house of the Lord with you guys. I know it's great to see family and to, um, what a blessing to see your faces today. And thank you for those of, um, those of you joining us on Facebook and YouTube. We appreciate you guys as well. And again, I'm just thankful to be here. I know, um, thank you guys for praying for us. My, my kids were out. We missed Sunday last week because my kids were sick, and so I, I missed you guys. You have no idea. <laughs> but um, it's good to see you guys all this morning, and I'm going to go over um, a few announcements. But before I do that, I want to welcome you. If it's, if it's your first time here, we want to welcome you as our, our honored and special guest. If you can raise your hand, not to embarrass you, but just so we can acknowledge you um, if it's your first time here. Um, we have a gift for you. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you. We also have a connect card. If you could just fill that out so we can stay connected with you. We um, want to um, keep you updated on what's happening here at Reclaim. And so praise God. Always nice to meet new people. And so I want to go over a few announcements um, before I take up uh, the offering here. Sorry, guys. I'm still adjusting to technology here. <laughs> um, okay. So this Wednesday we have our worship and prayer. Um, it is going to be... A special um, night, we have a, a guest uh, speaker, Pastor Bula Eastman from Hawaii. So Pastor Bula, he's an on-air personality for the fish in Hawaii, and he's also part of the Free Inside Ministry. He will be joining us this uh, Wednesday at 7 p.m. I encourage you guys um, to come out for that. We, we pray together, we worship together, but Pastor Bula, he's going to be bringing a special word. Um, I, I know some of you have heard him before. It's always a great time when him and his wife, Lady Lynn, come and join us. So that will be happening this Wednesday. I encourage you guys to come um, at 7 p.m. And then um, this 11th, November 11th, uh, this Friday, November 11th, we have a youth night. Um, they're having their friends giving. So if you have a young person or no young person, invite them to be a part of that. They'll be having a good time. They'll be um, having some turkey and ham, and they're going to be having some good food on Friday. <laughs> uh, Saturday morning, we have our Saturday morning prayer at 8.30 a.m. here in, um, in the sanctuary. So I encourage you guys to join us for that. And then coming up, um, Saturday, November 19th at 5 p.m., we'll be having our church's Thanksgiving potluck. Oh, yeah. So we'll be having a sign-up sheet um, if you want to be a part of that. Everyone's welcome. Um, that's a good time to invite family and friends. You've been meaning to invite, you know, to come uh, to visit church and stuff. Um, it's a good opportunity to invite them. Most people won't say no to food. I'm one of those people. So um, go ahead and um, prepare for that. That's November 19th at 5 p.m. So um, that's it for the announcements. And then I'm going to go ahead and receive an offering. So if I could have the ushers come up. We do have multiple ways to give that will be displayed on the screen. And then we also have um, envelopes if you have cash or check. And we'll have baskets up here for that. And so with that, I wanted to share. Um, I came across this story. Um, it's called the bricklayer story or the tale of the, of the three bricklayers. So there's three bricklayers working on a project. When asked what they were making, the first one said, I'm making $18 an hour. The next replied, we're making a wall to help support the roof. But the third said, we're building a cathedral for worshiping God. So each of these bricklayers, they were all engaged in the same task, but only one of them caught the bigger vision. And so church, there's a bigger vision to be caught. And I'm not talking about a building um, or a, a new church. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the choices, the decisions we have that we make that have the potential for eternal impact, for life-changing blessings. The, the, the decisions we make, they're not just for today or for tomorrow. They they're, can affect eternity for a lot of us. And so um, when talking about our financial decisions, um, real briefly, Matthew 25 tells us the story um, of the parable of the talents or the parable of the three servants, this master of the house, he entrusted uh, his property to three of his servants, a portion of his property. The first two went out and they doubled what had been entrusted to him. But the third one, he pretty much was just lazy and, and, and didn't believe, he buried it. He buried what was entrusted to him. So this parable shows us that the first two did what was pleasing to God. They pleased their master. Um, the third one did what was displeasing. He didn't make the most of what was given to him. He didn't utilize his full potential with what was entrusted to him. And the bigger picture isn't just, you know, that potential, the making the most of what's been given to you. The, the bigger picture that we need to catch, the bigger vision is everything we do, it needs to bring glory to God. Everything. Um, 
uh, John Piper, he wrote this book, Pierced by the Word. He says that we were created to enjoy and display the Creator's glory. That's our purpose. That's what we were made to do. Um, Colossians 1.16 says, all things were created through him and for him. So in everything we eat, we drink, when we pray, all the good things we do, all of that, everything is to bring glory to God. That's why we exist. That is where the, the, the weight and the significance of who we are comes into place. Um, I've thought about that, you know, whenever I'm feeling like, you know, what's the meaning of life kind of stuff, you know. Um, I, I have to evaluate my life. Is my life bringing glory to God? Really, really, you know. And, and it's, a, it's a time to be, you know, to look inward and see how we're, our lives are bringing glory to God. Um, in the same book, John Piper says this. Not to fulfill this purpose for human existence is to be a mere shadow of the substance we were created to have. This is a great tragedy. Humans are not made to be mere shadows and echoes. We were made to have God-like substance and have God-like impact. This is what it means to be created in the image of God. This is what it means to catch the bigger vision. Everything we do, bringing glory to God. Everything we do, displaying who, His glory. And so... I would tell you guys, and I'm sure you guys would agree, that we shouldn't be prayerful about whether we bring glory to God. It's just, it's, that's what we should do. Um, now, when it comes to our finances, yes, be prayerful. Be prayerful about what you, you earn, what you spend, what you save, and what you give. But also, I'd encourage you to be aware. Be aware of how those things that you do with your finances, how do they bring glory to God? Because the choices we make, they are having an eternal impact, whether you can see it or not. It's not just for today. It's not just for tomorrow. It's not just for the next generation. But there's eternal impact being made in the decisions that we make. So with that, I do want to go ahead and pray. Um, if you, again, if you do need an envelope um, for giving, we have those. You can raise your hand and we'll get one to you. But let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give, God, just to give back a portion of what you've, God, entrusted to us, Lord. Let us be good stewards over it, God, not for what we can get from it, God, but just to bring you glory, Lord, in everything we do, God, in the good deeds that we do, God, in the way that we, we act, Father God. Let everything, God, let it bring you glory, God. Let it magnify your name and lift you high, Lord. I pray that you'll bless the giver, God. Bless the cheerful giver, Father. Use the, the offerings, my God, for the furtherance of your gospel. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I'll throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much of nothing else before a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah. That was me, guys. I didn't, put, I didn't turn it on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, welcome and thank you. Thank you for, for your faithfulness and just your uh, support of what God is doing through this ministry. Uh, we couldn't do this without you and God drawing his people together. So it's a blessing that, uh, that you know what, that people support this ministry such as yourself. Um, and God is moving. Amen. God is moving. Uh, thank you for those that, who support us online, on Facebook Live or YouTube. Uh, it's an amazing it's an amazing tool that we can go out and reach people that maybe don't know about us, don't and never never heard about us. But they may looking uh, maybe looking online in the San Antonio area and they'll see us online. So it's a blessing how God uses that tool of online to get the word out, to get the word of God out. But um, I'm going to get started this morning. Uh, it's the beginning of November already. 
didn't 2022 just start? But I love this time of year. I love uh, um, after we go through summer, it cools down, amen, in Texas. We get some so a cool breeze, so to, so to speak. And uh, I know it's just a great time. I love this. I love the weather. Uh, I, I love the atmosphere. I love what people are talking about right now because they're thinking about Thanksgiving. And, and any time people could think about Thanksgiving, I think about what God has done in my life. It's not just a holiday, but we should be having a Thanksgiving type of lifestyle, a Thanksgiving type of lifestyle. Um, and so we have to remember how important that is, uh, how important that is that it's not just the month of November, but it's every day of our life. You know, we remember God in our lives and and how we glorify him, like my wife said. Do, and what we do, do we honor God? Uh, and, and before I get started, I, I, I want to reiterate what she said about Wednesday night. If you haven't been, uh, Pastor Bula has been with us uh, a number of times. And he comes from Hawaii. And he just has a powerful ministry, a, a prison ministry. He, he does free inside ministry. And, and uh, he goes to the, the prisons there and just shares the word of God with a number of inmates that are there for a short time or there for a lifetime. And people get saved. They give their lives to the Lord. And then he takes the gospel to the airwaves on the radio, on the fish. Uh, I think it's 95.5, the fish in Hawaii. He ha- he's every day, on, he, every day he's on the, on, the, on the radio. And then on Sunday, he has a, a Take Me to Church program in the mornings. And so it's a blessing to have him here. He chooses Reclaim Church San Antonio to come on a Wednesday night to spend his time with us just to do what God has called him to do. If, if you have time, make a way to get here. It's at 7 o'clock. Uh, it's just a powerful time in the Lord. And he always blesses me when he comes, and I'm sure he'll bless you as well. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. He's good. Um, uh, if, if you didn't hear, last week uh, we had the opportunity to support uh, the Down Syndrome Association uh, of, of South, South Texas. Uh, they have a, uh, a fundraiser every year, and they have it at uh, River City. River City Church in Selma, uh, California, and there was about 3,000 people there, and I was invited to do the, uh, the invocation just to pray for the event, that God was going to move in that event, and that, you know, just uh, the fact that he was able to explain our, our relationship with Reclaim Church and the Down Syndrome Association of South Texas was a blessing, and uh, we know it's from God because God placed us here so we can support one another. Amen? Amen. So this sermon series, I'm going to get it started. Uh, a grateful heart. All this month, we're going to talk about a grateful heart and what it means to have a grateful heart. The theme scripture for this uh, uh, sermon series is, you'll see it up there, it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. You're going to see this scripture for the next few weeks. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In everything, give thanks. Not in some things. Not just in your job and your family. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Let's pray. So, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you, Lord, that that we've come ready to receive. And I thank you for everyone here. Father, you know every person. You know every heart. You know every need. You know every desire. And I pray, Lord, as we spend time in you, do what only you do. Move freely in this house. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord, church. I titled this message, Remember When. Remember When. If, if, you're, if you're taking notes, I want you to write that down because I want you to, we're going to talk about that today. But let me ask a question. How many people in here would admit they can be forgetful? Or, or, or amen. <laughs> that, that answers my next question. I was going to say, how many people don't remember if they're forgetful or not? How many wives can say their husbands are forgetful? No, don't answer that. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I'm very forgetful, amen, I am, at least I think I'm forgetful, no, I'm kidding, Uh, but I tell you this, I tell everybody that knows me, is if I don't write it down, I'll forget, every time I have a date, or somebody tells me, I say, remind me, you asked me something today, remind me, I'm going to forget, didn't I say that, I'm going to forget, everything I do, if I don't make time to write it down, I open up my phone, back in the 90s when I was in sales, uh, I remember I had a, 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 a what's it called daily planner. I that thing was all scribbled all over from front to back, just scribbled with notes and dates and everything. And I stuck to it. I need that. Why? I'll forget. I'll forget. When we went into the phones, I remember every. I just transitioned myself. I I know I always have my phone on me. 
I always have my phone on me, and I and I've set, I set two or three alerts for that appointment. I do it because I know I'm going to forget. I know I'm going to forget, but I, I said, you know what? I know for myself, I get easily distracted. We talk about this. What was that movie? Squirrel? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? I forgot the name of that movie. Oh, oh yeah, that's what it is. The dog's talking. And he, the dog's talking. And he goes, squirrel. That's me. I, I'm the guy that goes into a room because I know I have to do something. I'm going to get something. I'm going to go over there. And then something else catches my attention. Squirrel. And then I fix what I'm, I'm, I'm fixing that. And I go, why did I come in here? Man. Why did I, I came in here for something. And then when we leave the house, I'm like, oh, I remember now. Turn off the stove. No, I don't say that. But I get easily distracted with things around. Sometimes people say when they're forgetful, uh, we'll say, oh, you have selective memory, right? You only remember what you want to remember, right? Um, the, if, you, if it's defined, it's something that it's the ability to remember facts while apparently forgetting other things, especially when they're inconvenient. And you'll know what I'm talking about. Let's ask, let's ask a sports fan when their favorite team won, ask them about it. See, remember when they won? They will tell you every detail of that game, of how it went, every stat you want. But ask them if they lost, and they're like, oh, I don't remember that. Ask a child their favorite ho- about their favorite hobby or their hero. They will tell you everything as, as you have time to listen to everything they have to say about it, but ask them to clean their room or their trash. Did you do that? I didn't remember. Ask me if you don't know. Ask me about road trips and travel, and we could talk all day. I'll tell you everything. I mean, I love to travel, you know, with my family. Uh, whenever we can, we go out on a road trip, a small road trip. But ask my wife if she asked me to clean the garage or, or trim the trees. And I'm like, you, when would you ask that? Amen. The honey-do list grows and grows. If you don't do it, it gets longer. Amen. Amen. And then when somebody else asks you, I'm like, oh, my wife keeps asking me that. Amen. Talking about the trees. Amen. Anyone else? Is that just me? Is that just me? Even though forgetfulness, it it can be harmless at times. It can be very damaging at times. What's more damaging than that, than us just being forgetful of the worldly things, but to forget things spiritually. To spiritually forget, or some people call it spiritual amnesia, it can be damaging and dangerous to your walk with the Lord. Even if you don't know God, if, if, if there are things you're trying to improve in your life, Things will affect you emotionally if we forget. It'll affect you physically if you forget. forget if you forget to take your medicine that you're prescribed, what happens? It could be damaging to you. If you forget things that somebody told you uh, an important date and, and you forget. Today's my 12th year anniversary. So happy anniversary to my wife. Uh, we wanted to be in the house of the Lord today, spend time with you, and then we'll celebrate after. Amen. This week, amen. What you gonna get me, babe? Amen. Twelve years, twelve years ago, uh, the Lord blessed me with my wife, uh, and and she couldn't run after she said yes. Amen. Didn't change her mind forever. Amen. If we're not careful, spiritually speaking, if we're not careful, we'll forget what God has done for our lives. We'll forget what He's asked us to do. There are so many people that get saved. And God has restored them at that point. Oh, God, you're so good. That day, the, the burden has been lifted. And they start living for God. And, and they go, I'm, Pastor, I'm called to pastor. I'm called to evangelize. I'm called to do this. But when life happens, they forget what God has called them to do. Is that collective memory? Hmm. We can forget and start to live our lives as normal. When something, ma- something powerful happens in your life, God gave you an encounter. He, he visited you. Something happened. You felt it because it didn't make sense. You felt God change your life. So He impacted you. So much so you're a man that never cries. You were weeping. A man that's so strong was on his knees asking God for forgiveness. Something so powerful. You said, man, I had an encounter with the Lord. Lord, I will always seek you forever. But then something goes wrong in life. Lord, I don't have time for that right now. Lord, I can't go to church because I'm busy doing something else. I'm not talking to anybody about in here because we're all here today. Amen. Come on. When things happen, we forget the most important things in our life. If we're not careful, we can take God for granted. Remember when? 
Remember when God moved in your life? Remember you saw God move in somebody else's life? Remember when God healed that person? Remember when God restored the sight of the blind? Remember when God restored that marriage or yours? Remember when God delivered someone from drugs or alcohol and they're still living for God? Remember when God made a way? If you don't know the Lord, if you don't follow Jesus, if you don't do it at all, you might think you got lucky. You might think life just happened. You might think, I did it myself. You may think it's coincidence. But let me tell you, there are no coincidences for God. God can do the impossible. Listen to me. It's not karma. It's you reap what you sow. Life didn't just happen. God made a way. You didn't, get, you didn't just heal yourself or get better. God healed you. It's not luck. His name is Jesus. Come on. He's your redeemer. He's your restorer. He's your healer. He's, your, he's everything. Do you see what I'm talking about? If we're not careful, remember when Jesus healed the ten lepers? Only one came back. Oh, what happened to the other nine? They were sick, but one of them, I mean, there's been speculation. One of them probably thought, oh, I was going to get better anyways. We can say that. Oh, I just don't have time to go back. But, but thank God I'm healed now. I don't have to go back and thank him. He healed me. Maybe he thought, uh, I, you know what, maybe I wasn't really sick. Maybe I didn't have a sickness and, and it, I was misdiagnosed. We get that a lot. God will, I mean, the doctor will say something's wrong with us and we'll go, and all of a sudden we go back and say, yeah, I, they, made, they made a wrong diagnosis. They said something I didn't, I didn't really have. Yes, you had it. But God healed you. Maybe you come in here and your marriage is on the rocks. And you go to church and you say, God, I just want God, restore my husband, restore my wife, do something because I've tried everything and I'm tired. And all of a sudden, a couple weeks pass and things are getting better, you guys are reconnecting, and you go, oh, yeah, we're restored. We did it. We decided to do this. We decided to pray. We decided to do all these things differently. Yes, but God led you to do those things. It's so easy to forget what God has done. And then when he's done it, forget that he did it. You forget it and you think about it. We live in a world, I'm telling you, right, and you'll agree with this, of, of entitlement. It's a culture of entitlement. Um, and, and, and a lot of people today feel like they deserve something they didn't work for. They're just entitled to it. Sometimes we have to pay our dues to get where we want to go. That's the way it is at work. And it's, at my job, I'm sure you... This happens. There'll be some young people there with no experience that want to get promoted for showing up to work. They weren't on time, but they barely made it. But I deserve to get promoted. I have bills to pay. I need an increase in my pay. They don't have experience, but they deserve it. Why? My parents told me I deserve it. Parents, listen to me. Speaking to myself. Do not give your children everything they want because you feel they deserve it. Because they feel they deserve it. Because they're so cute. Because they're too perfect. This will, they will develop self-entitlement. They will take everything for granted, even you. They will say, you, des you need to give this to me. You owe me this. Your child's attitude will turn, it will reflect to you, to school, even their jobs. Imagine... I need to raise. Why? Cute. I need to raise because I'm perfect. Where'd you learn? Who told you that? My mama? My daddy? You see what I'm talking about, though? Whatever you show your kids now, it'll reflect in their adult life until they have an encounter with the Lord. And you pray they have an encounter with the Lord. You do your best to raise them with, with what you have right now. But you don't ever give them everything they want. And some of you know my life and, and my past. And I had it pretty rough. I was raised by a single, single mother of four children. And I didn't get everything I wanted. Man. I didn't get everything I wanted, not because my mom didn't want to give it to me. She couldn't afford it between the drugs and the alcohol and all these other things, I'm sure she loved me, but she didn't give me what I wanted. She rarely gave me what I needed. And I realized that when I was little, I would say, man, when I get older, I'm never going to live this way. I'm my kids are never going to know how this feels. My kids are going to have everything. That's what I used to say. It didn't matter. I wanted my kids 
not to suffer like I suffered. So in the beginning of my parenting career, <laughs> my life, I gave my kids everything, everything. And some of you know my older daughter, and I, I wanted to, ble- I'm, not, I'm not talking about her, but I am. Um, she's probably going to watch and be mad at me, but amen. I'm doing this for her good. No, I'm kidding. Love you. Um, I remember I would give my kids everything. Didn't matter what, I would give it. Whether they asked for it or not, I wanted to give them it. I didn't ever want them to feel what it felt like to suffer and, and, and want. But I remember they would stop saying please and thank you. And, and, and so I didn't mind so much when they didn't say please and thank you to me. But it was embarrassing when somebody else gave them something and they just took it and walked away. Or they would just say, give me this or can I have this? No, please. And then when they got it, it was, there was no thank you. If your kids don't say please and thank you now, correct them now. Show them that's what they need to say. Show them they have to have respect for others, even themselves. Amen. And I remember, I remember when all of a sudden I, I, would, I would get so upset because I would, I would see that. I would be embarrassed. Like, you don't do that. But they never did it at home. Why would they do it outside the home? And I remember that I stopped giving them what they wanted. They'd get mad at me. Don't you care about us? Don't you care about us? Giving us, every, you don't, don't you want to give this stuff to us? I changed it and started giving them what they needed. I even made them go to church. They were mad. It was almost a punishment. Oh, you didn't do your homework? You're going to church on me on Wednesday now. They're like, man, church. Ugh, can't stand being there. I made them come, though. I made them come. As long as you're in my household, you will come to church. No matter what. You don't have a choice. You have to come. If, if, if you want to do whatever you want, then you got to pay the bills. You want to have your own place? you got to do that. If you live with me, you have to go to church. You have to be there with me when I go. You're not going to sleep in. You're not going to stay there. You're not going to take advantage of my house. When I'm in church, you got to be in church. And this is before I was a pastor. And I was strict. I'm not as strict now. But I still tell them that. Amen. They they just know already. Look, I started to give them what they needed. And I told them, do you want these extra things? You have to save. You have to work. You have to earn those things. Now, I remember, was it easy? No. It's not easy. As a parent, you want to give your kids the best. You want to bless them. You want to help them. You want your kids to have everything because you want them to experience the fullness of life. But don't give them what you don't have. We have to be careful with that. I remember I, I, just, I wanted to bless my, my girls. I wanted to give them every, everything they asked for. What do you want for Christmas? Man, I won't do it. I'll do it. No. I, uh, I would think, make me a list. And I would try my best to give them. They already knew. Everything they put in that list, I was probably going to try to get. I wanted to bless them with everything. Do we agree we want to bless our children? If that's us, how much more does God want to bless his children? Let me read Matthew 7, chapter 9. You parents, talking to you, you parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if we, you sinful people, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask? The Lord wants to bless you. Even if you don't know him, he wants to bless you. Even when you fall short, he wants to bless you. Even when you make mistakes, he wants to bless you. Even if you say, you know what, I'm just going through it right now. I don't know if I can do this. He still wants to bless you. You know why I know this? He blesses people that don't even love him. He blesses people that have turned their back and walked away. Don't you... Isn't it frustrating when you're trying to live for God and, and you're trying to do good things and things are just rough? One after another. And you see these people don't even go to church. They don't even acknowledge Jesus. They don't care. And they're just blessed over and over and over again. Isn't that frustrating? It can be, right? Like, Lord, bless them more. Amen. That's what we should say. But we don't say that, right? Not all the time. It's amazing to see. It's amazing to see when people feel they, the world owes them something. That's the culture of, of entitlement. And when that happens, it develops an attitude of taking things for granted. You don't have, when, you, when the world owes you, you, you no longer feel thankful for it. 
when somebody owes you something, when somebody owes you money or whatever you're doing, when they give it to you, you might be grateful they gave it to you, but like, then they owe me. They owe me. As a believer, if we're not careful, we'll take God for granted. And that's the main t- title of my, the main text this morning is Deuteronomy chapter 8. If you want to make notes, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Now I'm going to start my sermon, guys. Amen. Amen. That was the introduction. Amen. Sometimes the introduction is longer than the actual sermon. You know that? I didn't, when, when pastors would say that, I'm like, that was the introduction? It was like 20 minutes. Come on, get moving. I got to eat. Anybody saying that? Don't tell me. Don't raise your hand. I got to eat. Come on, Pastor. Hey, I'm feeding you right now. Come on. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11 through 14. I want you to hear this. Amen. This is for God's people, okay? This is for God's people. Number, verse 11. But that is the time to be careful. He's talking about people being blessed. Beware that in your plenty you do not forget the Lord your God. And disobey his command, his regulation, decrees that I'm giving you today. For when you have become full and prosperous and have built fine homes to live in, and when your flocks and herds have become very large and your silver and gold have multiplied along with everything else, be careful. When I bless you with this amazing job, when I've given you the houses you've always wanted, when I'm taking care of your family, all those things, be careful. Do not become proud at that time and forget the Lord your God. He rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. He, take, he took you out of darkness and brought you into the light. He brought you out of all the hard things in your life. He restored your marriage. He healed your loved one. He healed you. He did things that you thought there was no hope. Don't forget what God did for you. You were bound in drugs and alcohol, so much so you could never stop on your own. And you may have thought you did, but God did it don't forget what I took you from. Don't forget that I restored your marriage. Don't forget I healed your land. Don't forget all those things I did for you. I got more for you. I got more for you. The Lord has more. You see, this warning, it wasn't for people that didn't believe in him. It was the believer. For the non-believer, they get to see how good God is. They get to see all those things. And here's, and here's why we have to be careful for the non-believers. Somebody that doesn't believe in the Lord, they get blessed. And it may be even the enemy blessing them. I'll give you the world. Don't go to church. I'll give you, I'll give you your heart's desire. But don't praise God. You don't need God. Have me. I made you smart so you can do well at work. I, I gave you favor so you could get a good job. I did this. Even, oh, your family's suffering. That's okay. You're going to be blessed. You're going to, those people are going through things, but hey, it's about you. Take care of you. Don't help your neighbor. Don't help your parents. Don't help those people. It's all about you. All of a sudden, we have a me. It's all about me. It's all about me. When we go to church, it's all about me. It happens. It happens. If we're not careful, they didn't treat me right. I'm leaving. Me again. They didn't give me what I wanted. Me. Why do I go there? Why do I go to that place? I I never feel fulfilled. I don't feel fulfilled there. There's no substance there. I want something more. Me. I need something more. I don't know what it is, but I want something more. Let me tell you this. The world's material possession, everything in the world, you can accumulate everything. It'll never satisfy you. You'll always want more. It'll always run out. All the money in the world will run out. All the cars in the world will run out. All those things will run out. And when you don't know the Lord, you'll have a price to pay with the enemy. He comes to collect and says, remember I gave you all those things? Now I just want your soul. That's it. You don't need it. You're living a soulful life, soulless life. You don't care about people now. Why do you want your soul? You treat people bad. Why do you want your soul? You treat people ugly. Why do you want your soul? And all of a sudden, the believer, God calls the believer and they respond. 
They respond all of a sudden, Lord, I'm tired of the world. I'm ti- money doesn't matter anymore. Let me tell you something. Money is not the answer. It may be temporary for some situations, but it's not the answer. I know a lot of people that have a lot of money, and they're empty. And they're empty. There's a family that I know, they, have, they've got, they got uh, uh, settlements. A lot of money bought their house. They bought everything they needed, toys, cars, everything for their kids, everything. And they're suffering right now. They're suffering. Their marriage is suffering. Their kids are suffering because the marriage is suffering. All of a sudden, what can, they, what can, my, what can money do now? You know what they're doing now? They're praying. They're praying. When this is something we should do in the beginning of everything, pray. Pray in the good times, pray in the bad times. Here's the thing. I want to say, this is important. Let me say, is that Siri talking to me? I thought Siri was calling me. I, heard, I thought I heard Siri. <laughs> like, Siri, what? She's always calling me. I talk loud in my home. You know why? Because Siri's listening. And if the government's listening, I want them to learn about the Lord. <laughs> hey, if, if you want to hide in your house, they'll hear you. They'll probably see you now, too. Amen. Um, here, here's the truth. When you, when you are being blessed and you praise God, and you praise God, and, and, and you're saying, Lord, you're so good. Oh, man, I can lift my hands and hallelujah all the time. Don't ever get tired of doing that. Because the, the moment you make it casual and you stop lifting my hands, I stop lifting your hands because, you know what, Lord, you're good. I, I know you got me. Yes, he does. But the minute it becomes casual and you get comfortable, you will lose that passion for the Lord in prayer. And when you're in the valley, you won't be able to lift your hands. You won't be able to lift your hands in the valley because you haven't done it in the mountaintop anymore because you've become casual. You're no longer spiritually seeking God. You're just physically waiting for him to heal you. You lose the spiritual aspect of it. You need to keep pressing in no matter what. No matter how you feel, we don't serve God based on our emotions. At least we're not supposed to. We don't stop serving God because somebody makes us mad. We don't, serve, we don't stop serving God because you're mad at the church. Because God didn't hurt you, right? Maybe somebody in church did. And those are real, I'm not denying those. You might have got offended. You might have gotten hurt. You, you might have been let down, right? You hold, can I say, don't ever hold me this high, ever. Don't ever hold anybody up and ex- have a high expectation of them. Because we will all fall short of God's glory, and we will disappoint you if we do that. It's not my intention. For me, I never want to hurt anybody. I ne- I, and you know what? I'm, and I'm not afraid to apologize. There's been people that I've said things kind of harshly, and I apologize. When they brought it to my attention because I didn't realize it, I didn't mean it that way. You will do the same. Are you too proud to apologize? If somebody says, you offended me. No, I didn't. If the person feels that way, they're offended. You should have the grace to say, you know what, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know that affected you. I'm sorry. I'll watch, I'll watch that next time. We all need to be that way. You know what happens? The Lord wins. When you don't, when you get angry, the devil wins. When you say no, you offended me first. Mm. Here goes the stretch, the tug of war, and it builds up, and it gets stronger. What did God do for you? Do you remember when God moved in your life? Do you remember when he answered prayer? Do you remember when he did this? Do you know why you need to remember that? Because there will be times when he doesn't answer in your way. There will be times when bad things happen in this fallen world, and we have to realize the good things come from God. And when, when things don't happen the way I want, it doesn't mean God's not listening. But God's in, our impatience is not God's. Our urgency is not God's. He sees the bigger picture. There's things, he allows things in our life that we don't like, that are uncomfortable. But God allowed it for a reason. I can't say what that reason is. Only God can. If you're not praying, how could you ask? But you ask God for those things. Remember when God, you came to the Lord and you got saved. Remember how excited you were. Are you still on fire that way? Do you take God for granted? And I'm not pointing anybody out, but when you hear that, do you take God for granted? Do you show your appreciation for the love that he's given you, what he's done for your life? How do we do that? Let me tell you, I have some few points right here. How do you do that? How do we take God for granted? It's when we disregard his plan for our lives and do our own thing. The Bible says in verse 11 of that same, chap, of that same uh, passage, 
Verse 11, but that is the time to be careful. When God starts blessing you, that's the time to be careful because beware that in your plenty you do not forget the Lord your God. It says that we forget God and all of a sudden we don't obey his commandments anymore, his commands, his ordinances, what he wants us to do. In other words, when God blesses us, we disregard his plan now and the purpose of what he's doing in our life. So we're, in essence, we're telling God, thank you, God, for coming through for me. I don't need you anymore. I don't need you anymore. I'm okay now. You've helped me. I don't need you. I don't need you anymore. Maybe I'll put you on the shelf until I need you again. Come on, God is not a good luck charm. He doesn't go on a bookshelf, pull him off right when you need him. See, understand that situation. God has a plan for your life. It's a great plan. And the things that you go through when you suffer, know that God is preparing you for any trial in the future that you may go through or that you're going to go through. You want to be strong in the Lord because there's a battle coming all the time right around the corner. We're always going through a season. You're in the middle of a season right now where it doesn't feel good or you're coming out of it and you feel good or you're about to go right into it. Always in life, that's what happens. You go through seasons, but they're temporary. God has a plan for everyone, even you. And it's the best plan. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you what? Future and a hope. That's for you. That's for you. Give you a future and a hope. All the bad things that have happened in this world. You're here today. It didn't take you out. You made it through that time. You made it. You kept going. Your marriage survived. Your sickness turned to good health. Your finances were restored. And now you're able to bless others. There's things in your life, they don't happen just for no reason. You see, in that passage, Moses was telling people about God and saying, God is good to you. He's reminding them of his, of, of the, of his faithfulness and his protection and his provision. All those things are good. God can do that, but be careful. In those times, you don't forget what God has done. Remember what God has done. Don't forget it. Don't become too casual because your neighbor or your family's casual. Your family might have not had an encounter, but you did. God can use you to reach them. Not just with words, but through your lifestyle, through your actions. Do you come to church and tell them, come to church? But then go home and, and beat them up with words or talk down to them. You always are bad. You always make mistakes. I can't count on you for nothing. You always do bad in school. You ever hear, so here's the thing. When we don't follow God's plan, his plan for our lives to give us a future to hope, when we don't walk in his plan for our lives, we're saying, God, your, your plan doesn't matter to me. Why? I want to do my own thing. God's calling to the ministry, but God, I want to travel the world. God, I, God's calling you, and you feel him. He's waking you up to pray. I don't have time, Lord. I got to get up at 5 in the morning to go to work. God's trying to wake you up to pray and talk to him because why? You don't have time during the day. God says, can we talk now? You're not busy. You're just sleeping. God, I'll talk to you. I'm going to get up early in the morning. I remember I used to say that. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to spend time with the Lord for just two, three hours. That's hard to do when you stayed up till one in the morning. Are you still going to get up? God said, you promised me. You're going to spend time with me. Oh, but I'll, I'll do it on my lunch break. But you get busy at lunch. I'll do it right after work. But you get hungry. I'll do it right after dinner. I got to spend time with my kids. God's like, where, where do I fit? So what happens? He wakes you up in the middle of the night. So many people tell me, I wake up in the middle of the night. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm always waking up in the middle of the night. Ask yourself, have I prayed? Have I spent time with the Lord? Ask yourself that. I'm telling you right now, when you wake up in the middle of the night, you're going to remember this conversation right now. Lord, okay. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> Try to talk to your spouse that way. Oh, you want to talk now? What do you want to talk about? God, I got five minutes. I got to get up early. You, you blessed me with a job, and I can take it away. 
Did you hear me? Lord, you blessed me with that job. He goes, yes, and I can take it away. Who says you're going to wake up with good health? You don't want to spend five minutes with me? You know how I can get your attention so you'll spend time with me? Maybe I'll let you fall sick for three days. Because when you're sick, you talk to me all the time. When you're sick, oh, Lord, help me. Why? He says, why are you yelling? I've been here right next to you. Why do you yell only when, you're, when, when you need me? I've never left you. We think that we, the louder we get, God's far away. Lord! He's like, what? Yell at your spouse in the morning. Good morning! Try that. Don't try it. Don't say the pastor said. Listen, as parents, if you have a loved one, I don't want to just say parents, but if you have a loved one that's, that you're trying to show how to walk through this walk, this life, when their kids are little, what do they want to get into? Everything. They want to stick their fingers in outlet sockets. They want to stick a fork in there. They want to play with fire. They want to play with the fire. It looks cool. All those things. And what do you tell them? Do you say, don't do that? Or you just, don't do that. They want to run in the street. They don't care. Do you say, hey, don't do that? We say, get over here. What are you doing? You scared me. Right? Or are you, are you, are you calm and peaceful all the time because you're a child of God? Come on. That's not the time to be so holy right there. You better stop your kids from running in the street. Better stop them. We get so angry and frustrated when they don't listen to us. I told you over and over, don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt yourself. Watch. Do it. You're going to hurt yourself. But they say, I just want to do my own thing. Why can't I do it? I never get hurt. I never get hurt. I, I know what I'm doing. I can do it. Trust me. And you tell them, no, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get angry. You may suffer in pain. Is this God speaking to you? Or are we speaking to our children? We do this the same with our lives. We try so hard to do things our own way. God made me strong, right? When you're strong and you're feeling good, you're invincible. But the minute you're not feeling well, God help me. We want to do our own thing until our own thing doesn't work anymore. God knows best. His plan is best even if you can't see it. He has a plan. Sometimes we do things without a plan. That makes it worse. Try to wing it. Try to wing it. Try to just do it. I'm sure it will not be in excellence. If you try to wing it, it won't work. Sometimes it works, but not the way God wanted it to work. God has a plan for your life. His way is best always. Here's another reason we neglect God. We don't spend time with him, right? I'm not talking about just in prayer, but do you read his word? I remember when I was coming to church, and I didn't really believe, just to be honest with you. I didn't really believe what the pastor was saying. I didn't believe what they were talking about over here. I'm like, come on, that's so, really? God really did that? I don't believe it. I wanted to believe, not because of what they were saying here, because I wanted God to speak to me. To this day, 17 years, I've never heard God speak audibly. Still waiting. No, I'm not. I'll probably be afraid. Listen, my son. Be good. No. Um, I'll be like, what? Um, he speaks to me many ways. The first time he spoke to me was through my pain. It was through my pain and my son was dying. I was in church several years before I believed until then. My pain, I was hurting so much. I would have did anything for my gut, my son to be healed. And God moved. 
And all of a sudden, I started to believe through my experience. The old saying goes, it's better to learn from instruction than through your experience. Because the Bible is an instruction for your life before leaving earth. Right, Martha? I thought of you. She puts that sometimes. Basic, basic, Bible is the basic, what's it called? Um, basic instructions before leaving earth. That's what it is. I saw you post that one time and I remembered it. Amen. Um, it's instruction. It's better to learn in anything. It's better to learn from instruction than the pain of experience. And it will happen. Do you remember? Do you remember what God did for you? Do you remember when somebody invited you to church? You're like, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to believe or not. Listen, if you're in church, spouses, if your spouse doesn't believe, who cares? They're here. That's not your job to change them. God's. By the Holy Spirit, he's the one that changes people, not you. I'm not pointing at anybody, okay? I'm going like this. Not you. We don't change anybody. We don't have that power. We can't convince anybody. We can't control anybody. We can try, but all it does is cause friction. Do you remember that the God of the universe can do all things? Do you remember that he loves you so much he made a way and restored your marriage? Do you remember when God showed you a miracle when you, be- you thought it was impossible? Do you remember how you felt when you came into his presence for the first time and you felt it? You see, when we don't spend time in his presence or in his word, in prayer, all those things, we're basically t- telling God, I don't need you right now. Psalm 63 says in verse 1, O God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary that reclaim. Amen. To see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better. Listen, because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. The enemy wants to take the praise out of your mouth. He wants you to not pray. He doesn't want you to worship. He doesn't want you to lift your hands. He wants you to come. If you come, if he had his way, you wouldn't have made it today. But but the fact that you're here, he's like, don't praise. You're going through it right now. Don't lift your hands. You're going through it. Don't go through it. They're looking at you. Don't don't, don't lift your hands. They're looking at you. What are they going to think about you? you? Aren't you ashamed to be there? See, Listen. Desire God with everything you are. Make yourself be in his presence. You might not feel like you want to. Make yourself. You can control that. That's something you can control whether you go or not. You have a decision to make, a choice to make to be in his presence. Like you were stuck in a desert longing for water. What would you do? Would you seek him or would you suffer? If you needed water to drink so bad, would you drink or would you just choose to suffer? Essentially, that's what you do to your spirit when you don't pray and read his word. We should desire to spend more time with him. But I understand that. We want God to give us that desire. God, give me that hunger. But when he does, act on it. Because he will. He will. He, He will. See, prayer is the breath of our life, of our Christian life. Every, every, every molecule that you breathe, all the air that you breathe is the source of your life that he's given you. Do you realize without air, you wouldn't exist? Without air, you wouldn't wake up. You wouldn't function. You can't. When you walk as a believer, and this is for the believer, what does your life show? Think about it. If you tell yourself, if you tell people, oh, I'm, I'm a, I go to church, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, what do they see? Do you have to tell them that, or do they know that by your life? That's something that we should look at. Do they say something is different about you, or you got to tell them, oh, no, I go to church? Or do you tell them that after they tell you they go to church? Like, oh, I didn't know. You, you, go, to, you go to church? Whoa. Wow. Do you act that way in church? 
They'll say, man, I don't want to go to that church. They act that way. By the time you spend time, by the time you spend time with God and the amount of times you pray, your life reflects it. It's so important to know that because, listen, there will be times when, when something bad happens and you'll tend to worry. That's, no, that's natural stuff, okay? It's supernatural to depend on God. Because it doesn't make sense, right, at times. It doesn't make sense. The world will say, why do you keep going to church? Why do, why do you keep you know, walking that walk? What do you get from it? It's supernatural, and it's something they don't understand because the spiritual veil hasn't been lifted yet. Look, when we take God for granted, here's, now listen to me. I made a note, and I have to frame it in my own words. I always do that to myself. Sometimes when I'm speaking, I'm like, Lord, just show me what to say. You know what taking God for granted is? It is depending on him in the bad times and not in the good times. Taking God for granted. Lord, I need you right now, and you're going to come through. I know you are, and we truly do it. Like he moves. And all of a sudden, you're blessed. I'm good. Thank you. I'll talk to you next time. It's easy to forget. It's easy to forget the things of God, the good things of God. When? When there's no more pain. You know how when we're in pain and we're suffering, and we all go through something physically, emotionally, even spiritually. When we're in pain, we talk to God. We connect with God. And, and all of a sudden, we're like, man, I feel that pain. I feel that pain. And uh, Lord, remove it. Lord, remove it. And once he does, you know why we stop talking? Because we don't feel it anymore. And we forget what God did. Or do we? Lord, I'm going to give you all the praise. Lord, if you heal me, oh, man. I'm going to give my tithe. Lord, heal them in Jesus' name. Man, heal everybody in Jesus' name. Not for the money, guys. I want you guys to be healed. Amen. Amen. It's up to you to be faithful and obedient to the Lord. Not me. Amen. Listen, when life is good, and I'm going to be, because you can come up from the team. When life is good and it's smooth sailing, everything's falling into place. Good at home. My relationship been being restored. I have some money. Nothing is wrong in the world to you. Be careful that you don't say, God, I know you have me. I, I think I got it for now. But then a tragedy strikes. Here's the thing. A, a tragedy will strike, an illness, a death, problems, financial, you lose a job. Somebody in your, your the marriage is, being, is falling apart. People have just been, they're changing the way they treat each other. And all these things happen. You know what happens to the believer? They haven't been praying or spending time with God, so they become ashamed and they won't ask for help. They say, Oh, they won't even come to church because uh, I, have, I haven't been spending time with God. I feel bad now to go ask God for help. That's not God's plan. God wants you to push through that. God wants you to push through the pain. He wants you to push through the, through the pain. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't let the enemy deceive you by saying you should be ashamed. Listen, bad things are going to happen. This message today when I say, remember when. Always remember when God was there for you. He doesn't change because our circumstance changes. He's still good. Now, the thing you're going through may not be good. It may not feel good. But God is good. You have goodness with you. That's what you have to remember. Remember when God walked with you. Remember when at the end of the trial and you finally felt God and I could breathe and you're like, all oh, glory to God. People say, oh, that was awesome. Congratulations. All glory to God. Oh, you got better. Praise to God. Yeah, doctors healed me. I'm good now. I got the best doctor. You do. You're a great physician. Moses says this in verse 12 and 14 of that passage. 
Deuteronomy chapter 8. And when you have become full and prosperous and have built fine homes to live in, when your flocks and herd have become very large and your silver and gold have multiplied along with everything else, be careful. Do not become proud at that time and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Listen, tough times will send us to our knees, but don't forget where the blessing came from originally. See, we can take God for granted. When we don't depend on him. Because we forgot what he did before. God, how can you let this happen? Everything's good and then something wrong. God, why did you let this happen? Here's what I think, and I, and, I, and, I, and I bolded this point for myself because I truly believe that the great, there's greater danger in enjoying and blessing all of God's blessings to a point we forget him. We, all of a sudden, we worship the blessing and not the blesser anymore. Remember what God has did. Don't forget part of the life that he, the life he, the life he brought you out of and the life he's placed you into. Don't ever become too proud the Lord. God called you for a reason. You see, I realize that sometimes life gets in the way and it becomes too strong and we forget who he is and what he came, what he did for our lives. Sometimes we realize that life, and you have to realize this, that life is hopeless without him. If you don't know him, get to know him. When you realize God loves you so much, he sent his only son, think about that. When you responded to his call on your life and, and how good he is, he gave you new life. Don't ever forget the grace of God. Don't ever forget his amazing love. Or, and always remember that he can be found when you seek him. He'll rescue you when you ask. He'll change you if you ask. Don't ever forget to show your appreciation for the Lord. And, and you know what? How do you do that? I, I don't know what to do. I can't. Now, our salvation is not based on our good works. Amen. Thank God for that because we would all fall short. But in our obedience now, if you want to show God, I just appreciate everything you do. Walk in his plan for your life. Will you make mistakes? Yes. Commit to him daily. Talk to him daily. Even You don't have to have a set prayer schedule where I got to set an hour with the Lord every day. That would be nice if you have the time. If you make a time to do that, yes. Talk to God when you're driving. Talk to God anytime you can. If, you, if, you, if you're by yourself and you have something that you're thinking, that's on your mind, talk to God. Look to God in everything. Look to his goodness in everything. God, I know you have a plan for me. God, you're doing something. I know it. I know you're in this. It doesn't look good, but I know you're in this. Remember how God's grace rescued you the first time because he'll do it again. God will always rescue you. You have to ask. Allow God. Allow God to receive you every day, not just on the good days. Allow him to receive you all the time. Give yourself to him every day. In the good, the bad, and the ugly, give yourself to God. Why wouldn't you, in a time of frustration, give yourself to God? Why wouldn't you, in a time of anger, give yourself to God? Why wouldn't you, in a time of fear, doubt, confusion, why wouldn't you say, God, just, I'm all yours? When you do that, something changes. When you're able to surrender to God in the good and the bad times, when you say, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm not just going through the motions. This is my life. My life is to live for you and for you to live in me. And if you live in me, I need to represent you. And when I represent you, others will come to know you. And because you're in me, I'm grateful. Psalms 107, 1 through 3 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak it out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. For he has gathered the exiles from the many lands, from east, west, 
north and south. Everybody that was cast away, everybody that was no good, he brought them back. I don't care if when you were raised and they said you were no good, I called you good. I don't care if their job didn't like you, I receive you. I don't care if people come against you, I don't, I'm for you. It's not an excuse to say, Lord, nobody likes me. Did I like you? Lord, you never bless me. Yes, I do. Are you breathing? You're talking to me. Are you breathing? Remember when I did this. Isn't that something? When you help somebody out, I don't know, I don't know if this is you or not. You ever help somebody out and they seem so unappreciative, ungrateful? And they ask you again or they, or they don't talk to you. Hey, remember I helped you? Remember I was there for you when you needed help financially? Remember I helped you with a car? Remember when I went to pick you up? Remember I did all these things? Why are you being so mean now? I think it's in human nature to, fall, to do that. Why would we want God of the universe to have to say that and remind us? God, I'm so mad at you right now. Hey, remember what I did for you? I didn't change, you did. I didn't stop talking to you, you did. I didn't, I didn't, stop, I didn't stop blessing you, you stopped receiving from me. Why would we want God to do that? Because in our human weakness, that's understandable to do that. It's understandable, and God knows. But you know what special is? He doesn't stop receiving you even when we're ungrateful. But you know what happens when we're grateful and we show him? Oh, man, we always say this, that your blessing that you're praying for, could it be it's on the, on the other side of your obedience to say, say yes to God? I'm tired. I just, man, when everything goes perfect, then I'm going to go serve God. When God blesses me with the right job, then I'm going to go serve God. When God opens this door, I'm going to go serve God. When God restores my marriage, I'm going to go serve him. When God does this for me, I'm going to serve him. No. Do those things first. God, I'm going to serve you. I know you're going to bless me. God, I'm going to serve you no matter what. You're going to make a way. God, I know if I put you first, my marriage will, will be restored. That's a hard one for me because so many people give up on their spouse and God before they even try. If you feel tired of your situation, pursue God no matter what. When you pursue God and you focus on him, when he shines his light on you with the love he gives you, that'll go this way out of you to your spouse. If you went through a situation where it didn't happen that way, well, God didn't do that for me. It didn't work out because my spouse never responded. It didn't work out. I had to get divorced. It didn't work out the way I wanted it. God didn't bless me this way. God knew what I needed, he didn't come through. God didn't help me, and I feel guilty because I had an abortion. I had an abortion, and I should have, shouldn't have. And I feel guilty every day for that. I left my spouse because I thought it was the right thing to do, but I, maybe I shouldn't have. I didn't, I didn't treat my kids the best when they were growing up, so I feel guilty, and I feel like I have to give them everything now. I've done things in my life I'm not proud of. How could God restore me? That's why I don't ask, because there's shame inside. I don't ask because I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't ask because I don't know if God will forgive me. I don't ask because I don't feel God's presence. Why don't I feel his presence? Why can't I experience God for my life? Is it because everything I did bad in my life? No. That's not the reason. If you want to feel God, you have to let God know, I need you. You need to come into my life. I need to seek you for all things. Remove the shame. Remove the guilt. By the blood of Jesus, that's washed away. 
That's the difference from the Old Testament and New Testament. In the Old Testament, when they sinned, they did sin, sin sacrifices or uh, sin offerings. They had to get uh, an, uh, uh, an offering and spill blood to be forgiven. And it forgave the sin. But when the Lord sent, when he sent Jesus, when Jesus came, the perfect, the perfect sacrifice and shed his blood, it washed away sin of the world along with the guilt and the shame that it's not yours to carry anymore. It is not yours to carry anymore. Shame and guilt is not for you to carry anymore. Believer, the shame and guilt is not for you to carry. You don't hold on to the past when you come to the Lord. When you've asked God for forgiveness and he's received you and forgiven you, you have a clean slate. The past no longer matters. Not even the people that hurt you. It matters. The sin doesn't matter. All those things in the past, you have a clean slate. When you ask for forgiveness and God doesn't remember your sin, you shouldn't either. It's not for you to remember anymore. You're a new creation. Here's the thing. When we, when we walk this walk and when we're saved and we're serving God, things go wrong again. We fall short and we don't come back to receive the goodness. There's not a number that I can give you for how many times the Lord will forgive you. He gives you a new slate every time. You ask for it with a, rep a repentive heart. Ask for it. And allow his goodness to wash over you to give you a new, st new start. The new comes, the old is gone. That's for those that want to receive his goodness, his grace, his mercy, his love, all those things. Remember 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you don't know the Lord and need those things that I'm talking about today, even online, he loves you. He's been waiting for you. He wants to receive you. But you have a choice because he gave you free will. That's, how, that's what love is, giving you the choice. Because if God forced us to love him, that wouldn't be free will. God gave you a choice. He wants you to come and not be forced. And it's not by the sound of my voice, but it's by drawing of the Lord. You know when a believer gets up and responds to the Lord and they worship God, it's not the person asking. It's the Lord drawing. Don't ever, let, don't ever stay in your seat when you feel a tugging at your heart because you think that, oh, I already did it before. Oh, no, I don't want people to know what I'm going through. All those things, they're subtle suggestions that come from the lie of the enemy. Maybe all week he's been telling you not to go, you know, all these things are going wrong and you haven't had the best week. Maybe you haven't had the best week because there's been tragedy. Maybe because God didn't answer your prayer the way you wanted. Maybe because someone's suffering and you don't like that they're suffering. Maybe it's because you're waiting for God and it's been years. And you're tired of praying. Don't stop praying. Keep going. Keep pressing in. Keep pushing. Pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. He is good. Let's bow our heads and pray, amen? So, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for your presence, and I thank you for everyone here. Lord, you know every person in here. You know their circumstance. You know their hearts right now. Lord, you know every place that we're at. You love each and every one of us. You love us in our frustrations. You love us in our shortcomings. You love us in our pain. You love us in our disobedience. You love us in our unforgiveness. You love us in our 
greed and envy. You love us in those things when we fall short. And all you want is for us to come to you. Lord, you're so good. Lord, you can do all things. And I pray right now as we're praying to you, oh Lord, that your spirit set, settles on every person, every heart. Church, if you don't know the Lord, if you've never asked him for forgiveness, if you've never asked him to come into your heart, it's not about the church, it's not about uh, a religion, it's a relationship with the Lord Jesus. He's the one that draws. It's not the pastor. It's not all these different people. The Lord Jesus, if you feel a tugging on your heart, you say, I want that. I've tried everything myself. I want that for myself. If that's you, I don't want to embarrass you, but I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to the Lord. All you got to do is, if you want that, a new slate. I've never done it, but I want a new slate. I want to, I want to start over. I want a clean slate where... The Lord doesn't remember the past anymore of my past sin. But all of a sudden the new comes and I get a do-over. That's you. I don't want to embarrass you. I just want to pray with you. That's you. Would you raise your hand? Put it down. Anybody else? And I see the hand. Put it down. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. On his heart, wanting that forgiveness, a do-over the Lord maybe you've done that already maybe you've asked for that and you're walking in that right now but you're going through it right now how could I praise God right now because he's good how could I come to him right now I know what I've done I know the things I've said I know how I've acted I've acted this way and I, and I know he does he's not going to receive me now yes he will if that's you, maybe you've asked for forgiveness before and you feel like, man, I just want to do over. I love the Lord. I'm walking. I try, I try to walk with him, but I always fall short. The Lord knows. If that's you and you want to get, out of this, get in on this prayer, let's pray together. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Amen. I see your hand. I see those hands. Amen. Anybody else? It's a special time. When God draws his people. When God draws his people. Amen. If you raised your hand, amen. Can you look up at me? Amen. Amen. Can you meet me up here, Papa? Can you meet me? Can you come up here? Amen, sir. Yep, amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome back. God bless you. Come on up. Come on up to the front. Can I have, no, somebody's going to come with you. Come on, Melissa. God bless you. Good to see you. What's your name, sir? David. Nice to meet you. Amen. Amen. Church, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. But we don't want them praying alone, amen? We are the church, and we pray together. And, and those who are up here, I'm going to say this prayer. I want you to repeat it after me, but don't say it to me. Say it to Jesus. Say it to Jesus, amen? Say this. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it one more time. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me, and that you rose again. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart, be my Lord, and be my Savior. From this day forward, I will seek you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's just pray. So, Father, in Jesus' name. Come on, just stretch your hands out. Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, all of heaven rejoices, Lord, when, come, when people come to respond to you. And I pray right now, let your favor and your blessing be upon your son and your daughters here today, God. Oh, Lord, move mightily on their behalf. Father, the old is gone and the new is here. And I pray right now, new life, new life, Lord, new blessing for them, God. Oh, Lord, I pray as you've removed sin, they do not remember it. Lord, as, as you do not remember the sin, they do not either. They have new life. And I pray right now, Lord, just for us, new strength. Oh, Lord, a refreshing and encouragement. All those things, Lord, that we, so we can seek you. Remove every obstacle from their lives. Remove every hindrance from their lives. Oh, Lord, they want to see you move in their lives. And I pray for a mighty move of your spirit because you are the mighty one. Because you are the mighty one, Lord. We know, Lord, all things are possible through you. All things are possible through you. Right now, we pray right now. Oh, Lord, do what only you can do. Do what only you can do. Oh, come on.
on, church. Let's give us a praise right now. Before I we take want to praise him up to the front. We want to worship God here up to the front. Yes. And I stood in the power of your presence. Before I